This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. All right, let's jump in. I am Gary Seegers. I am your host. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures. You can go on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything, or you can just go to winningcureseverything.com. Here is the rundown for Tuesday, February the 12th. Ole Miss vacated 33 wins. That is the end of their NCAA problems, from what I understand. We're going to dig into a couple of things about that. Uh, it won't, won't last too long. Uh, we're going to talk about exactly how big mobile gambling has become. Uh, Jamarcus Russell has been signed to play football, amazingly. And we're going to talk Kyler Murray team odds. And, of course, I've got college basketball picks. Had a big night last night. Went 3-1 and one against the number. Uh, that puts us at... Let's see, 125, 96, and 4 on the season. Uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can go check them all out over at tunicatravel.com. Get more information from there to figure out which sports book you would like to go to. Uh, let's jump in. Let's talk about Ole Miss vacating 33 wins. It is from the following seasons 2010, 2011, 2012. 2013, 2014, 2016. Now, the ones before Hugh Freeze got there, before 2012, uh, and some of the ones after, I believe that these have to do with the ACT fraud situation that was going on. Um, Chase Parham from rebelgrove.com wrote that Benito Jones was the ineligible player in 2016. So he was a freshman in 2016. He is from... Waynesboro, Mississippi, from Wayne County, where the ACT fraud stuff initiated. And if you go back on, on the website, winningcureseverything.com, you will find a ton of articles that I wrote back a couple of years ago about this situation. What I'm trying to figure out is why, was, why were the five wins from 2016 vacated and Jones continued to play in 2017 and 2018? Now, Parham went back and, and took Jones's name out of it. I can't figure out what the, what the issue is. So I'll do a little more digging to figure out exactly what, what was going on there because all the stories now do not have Benito Jones's name in there. But it was included initially in rubblegrove.com's report. So I feel like there has to be something there, I would think. But, yeah, he was a freshman in 2016. He was committed to Alabama. All of the reports were that he was not going to be able to get into school. Raquan Davis, who is from Mississippi, he was a uh, he was a recruit in 2014. That he responded when Jones flipped from Alabama to Ole Miss. He said that Jones was was never coming to Alabama. Like it wasn't a flip. He he was committed to Alabama, but he was never going to come to Alabama. So I'm a little. I would imagine it has to do with the ACT fraud stuff. And none of that is in any of the reports, I would imagine, because the NCAA and Ole Miss and other schools that, that were involved with this would, would like to keep this stuff under the table. They don't want the ACT fraud stuff to get out because it is a whole nother level of stuff. So, again, I'm going to dig, and I'll probably write another article on it, but, uh, but that's something to keep your eye on. Um, yeah, Ole Miss, none of this stuff matters. We all saw the games. The 2014 win over Alabama, the goalpost, it, it came down. Ole Miss won the game. Katy Perry was there for college game day. So they can wipe it from the record books if they want to, but Ole Miss fans remember that stuff. The crazy thing to me is there were certain bowl games that they were allowed to keep. Uh, just different. It was. It's a strange – Thing. You'll have to go read it. Go to rebelgrove.com, read their article. Really good stuff. Chase Parham and, and uh, Neil do a great job there. Uh, so go check them out. Next topic up, mobile gambling is dominating as far as gambling transactions go. Mobile gambling as of 2018 was more than 70% of all online or all gambling transactions. That is a massive number. Uh, there is an article over at LegalSportsReport.com. Iovation did the study on it, and they, they jumped into three different things. Um, mobile transactions have skyrocketed. 
game abuse and cheating can increase but level out. And by cheating and whatnot, it, that's discussing like online bonuses for online uh, sports books. And then credit card fraud continues to steadily climb. Uh, so they, they jumped into a few things, but the thing that, that stood out to me the most, or the most, the growth rate of mobile gambling was 95% in 2018. That is huge. And yet we still have states that don't have it. And I've been harping on it forever. If you watch this show regularly, you know where I'm coming from. Mobile gambling is the future. The brick and mortar shops, yes, it's cool to have those, but guys can't go every week to go and get, they can't go every day to go gamble at a, a casino. They just, you can't do it. Now, it's a good way to make money when you get people down there, but the casinos in these states could make an absolute killing if everybody just went with mobile gambling. It's that much easier. So all of it's already in place. You you know how I feel about this. It is what it is. Um, next topic, Jamarcus Russell. The number one pick in the 2006 NFL draft. I believe that's it. I didn't do my research on this beforehand. But Jamarcus Russell, 2006 number one NFL draft pick. He is the the reason why we have the, uh, the money situation that we do for the NFL draft. Uh, he was a complete bust in the NFL. Absolute bust. He is now signed to play quarterback for the AAF's Memphis Express. Yes, that is how bad Christian Hackenberg looked in week one. There are backups. They've got Zach Mettenberger back there. Um, But, man, when you're signing Jamarcus Russell, last I saw he was well over 300 pounds. He was not in playing shape. I didn't even know what he was doing before this. And yet it was announced this morning, Adam Schefter announced it, that Jamarcus Russell was signed by the Memphis Express. I will be curious to see him on the sideline in Memphis. I'll actually be at the game on Saturday night. We will, uh, we will see what happens with that. For the topic, Kyler Murray. Yes, he decided to play NFL over Major League Baseball. Smart move by him in my, uh, in my estimation. You can make a lot more money as a first-round NFL draft pick initially than you can in Major League Baseball. Now, over time, you can make massive contracts in baseball, but there's no guarantee that he would get to that point, right? I think it's something like 66, only 66% of first-round draft picks ever make it to MLB, and even then, the majority of those are out within two to three years. You never know, right? And, And if this doesn't work out for Kyler Murray, he can always go back to baseball. Tim Tebow is 30-something years old, and he's about to make the major leagues this season, I would imagine. The funny thing about this is now Kyler Murray betting odds are out. So these are odds regarding which team will select Kyler Murray in the NFL draft. The number one team I think would surprise you. Now, everybody has talked about Cliff Kingsbury's comment when he was the coach at Texas Tech and how he would draft Kyler uh, number one overall if he had an NFL team. Well, he does have an NFL team. He does have the number one pick. Is he actually going to take Kyler Murray? Well, they've got Josh Rosen already at quarterback. They took him number 10 last year. They are plus 500, and they are the second best odds. The first best odds are the Miami Dolphins. I'm not sure that I get it. I don't know what the connection is, but they are plus 150. The Cardinals are plus 500, the Giants are plus 500, the Jags are plus 500, the Raiders are plus 600, the Bucks are plus 1,200, Redskins plus 1,200, the Bengals plus 1,400, the Broncos and the Steelers plus 1,400. There's a lot that's going to change, right? We've still got the Combine coming up, which, by the way, this year is going to be shown on ABC and ESPN. Kind of surprised by that. It looks like the NFL ESPN... uh, relationship has gotten better but I want to see what he measures at because I don't think he's very tall he's not very big but NFL offenses have changed and Kyler can be incredibly successful early on so long as you have an offense that is tailored to what he can do I mean you you saw what the Ravens were able to do with Lamar Jackson this year even though he's not a great pocket passer so That's not to say Kyler Murray's not. Kyler Murray can absolutely fling the ball. He is outstanding. 
but his height worries me a little bit. Maybe it shouldn't because Drew Brees is able to do what he does. But I'm I'm curious because he is such a, a an interesting case study. He is smaller than a prototypical quarterback. He runs a, a crazy high octane offense. What is the NFL going to do with a guy like that? I'm curious. All right, let's jump into the college basketball gambling picks. Uh, again, went three and one last night. Went four two and one on Sunday. That's seven three and one over the last eleven picks. And tonight, I've got seven for you. It's a big Tuesday, big slate. Uh, some of these numbers I got last night. I'm not sure how much they have changed. So you might want to be wary. Go see what your number is. If you can buy back a little bit, you might want to do that. Here's what we got. Uh, I've got under 128.5 for Michigan at Penn State. Uh, both of these teams have been scoring not a lot of points. Michigan on the road scores much fewer than they do at home. Uh, Penn State, they score a few points no matter what. And the pace of play for this game will be way, way down. So look for a game probably in the 50s, maybe in the lower 60s, something like that. But under 128.5 is my play on it. I'm going over 130.5 for Michigan State against Wisconsin. Again, got this line last night. Um, the formula that I use expects this to be uh, around 135. So 130.5, I feel pretty good about that. So uh, over 158 in Central Michigan versus Bowling Green. Both of these teams can score a lot. I expect this one to go over, uh, over by – Quite a bit, actually. I, my, my numbers have this around 166, 167 for a total. So we'll see what happens with that. I've got Purdue as a pick em at Maryland. Purdue is riding a huge winning streak. They, they are beating everybody. Maryland, they've had a little trouble as of late. They won their last game. Uh, they, they have a lot of talent, and they are playing at home, but Purdue is the better coach team. I think I'm taking Purdue as a pick em here. I've got over 125.5 in Eastern Michigan against Ohio. My numbers have got this like 137, like a 137-point a total, and it's only 125.5, and, and that number has actually gone down. Now, if you go and look, Eastern Michigan and Ohio both have hit some unders, but it's not because of them. The teams that they are playing are hitting the unders. So I think this will be a, a higher-scoring game. I, I could see a game in the upper 60s, in the uh, in the upper – I mean, maybe lower 70s, but we'll see. Uh, next one, I've got Drake plus 5.5 at Southern Illinois. My line has this as a pick em. Drake, I've bet on them a lot this year. I've done pretty well. They are uh, they are great against the spread. I like them here, even on the road, plus 5.5. I, I think this will be a, a close, you know, one possession game here. And then finally, LSU, 5-1 and one straight up on the road. Four and two against the spread on the road, uh, and really that four and two should be five and one. It depends on what the closing line was that you got uh, uh, for the Missouri game. Um, I got them plus eight tonight at Kentucky. The line opened nine; it went down to eight. There's a lot of people on LSU. I think I side with them. I think LSU is going to play well. Kentucky has a massive game at home against Tennessee this weekend. Tennessee, number one in the country coming in. I could see this being a, a letdown look-ahead spot. Uh, basketball's a little different than football with this, but, you know, Kentucky riding a massive winning streak. That I could see them still getting the win, but I think LSU keeps this game really, really close. I like the Tigers plus eight here. As always, you can go get the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, you go up to the navigation bar, click on Gambling Picks, or just type in winningcureseverything.com slash gambling-picks. Easiest way to go about it. You can also find them on Twitter as well. At GaryWCE is my handle. The site is at Winning Cures. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.